Hey everyone, this is Puka bringing you a special Battle Road match from Portugal, actually. Uh, the player on the right, Joao Lopez, actually sent me these videos from their Battle Road in Portugal. This was from the Barreiro Portugal Battle Road, apparently. Uh, he sent me some information on it. We got a couple matches here. So this will be round three. We're getting started here. Uh, so Joao is on the right, facing Martim Oliveira on the left. I apologize if I've butchered these names, but I am an ignorant American, so we'll have to live with it for now. So, uh, looks like Martim is starting on the left. This will be a uh, Darkrai Hydragon deck against the uh, Darkrai Terrakian on the right from Joao. So, this should be an interesting matchup. Uh, this is one that I've played quite a few times. I'm pretty experienced now with the uh, Darkrai Terrakian deck. So, uh, it's a very close matchup. It can come down to a whole lot of stuff. Including who gets the better start, who um, draws better off of N, all sorts of things. And we'll see what happens. Now this is a best 2 out of 3 match. In Portugal they actually play their Swiss rounds with best 2 out of 3. So this will be a 45 minute best 2 out of 3 match. So even if someone wins the first match here, it's not over. You have to win 2 to advance, or not to advance, just to win the round. Um, so they use match play for every round, which is much different than what we he what we have here in the U.S., which is just single round Swiss or, or single game Swiss. I mean, uh, you just play one game and decide it that way. I like the best two out of three format. I wish they would use that in America as well, but alas, we just use single game. So it looks like we're gonna start with an N from our team. Uh, he's gonna use well, he's he's starting with a Dark Rye and he has two Dinos out there. So he's going to want to get a Sableye out, I'm sure. Uh, he's going to want to try to get some Dark Energy in the discard pile, but oh, he's got a, actually a nice hand to start off with. He's got a Rare Candy and a High Dragon in hand. He's already got an Evil Light on his Dark Cry. So it's looking like things are definitely going to go his way, as long as he doesn't get End or anything like that. Um, so Jaw is going to bench two promo Dark Cries and then play a Juniper as well. Um, he has to discard a Fighting and a Dark Patch. Which is kind of painful. So you can see he is playing Terrakian. I mean, I knew that already, but... Um, you can see he's opting to play Fighting instead of Prism. Um, fighting is nicer because you can energy switch that. And also, it doesn't get removed by Enhanced Hammer. Um, Prism has its advantages because it can count as a Dark and a Fighting. So, um, Prism is nice. It lets you use Shaman... It lets you do all sorts of stuff, but you can't energy switch it, and it gets knocked, or it gets removed by uh, Enhanced Hammer, so. There are some pros and cons to it. You can also energy search for fighting if you play that, so. Looks like Jaw did just catch out a dino and use Confuse Ray. Uh, I'm surprised he didn't just Junk Hunt. There's no real advantage to doing the 10 damage there. You might as well just get back a Catcher and a Dark Patch. Uh, I don't actually think the 10 damage will ever come up in a practical situation, but I could be wrong. But we do have a turn to High Dragon, which is huge. This is something you always fear when you play against this deck. Uh, if they get that out turn to, uh, it's just it's just like a ticking time bomb. Um, he's going to Night Spear on the third turn. There's no way to stop that. Uh, he could have gotten the turn to Night Spear if he had gotten some stuff going his way, but it doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, so now, yeah, you can just Dark Trance all your stuff around. You can retreat, you can... I mean, this is very scary. <laughs> uh, as as the player who's not using High Dragon, you always want to try to prevent your opponent from ever getting this set up. And turn two, he's already gotten it out. There's nothing you can do about that. Uh, but now, Joao's just got to be trying to, you know, take that out of play. He's got to be thinking, all right... I cannot win a straight-up Dark Ride battle anymore because my opponent can just move energy off and then max potion. There's no real way around that. Um, but now it looks like he's just going to attach to his bench Dark Ride and pass. Now this is a very bad start. We're seeing two completely different starts from these guys. You know, the, the High Dragon player is setting up and the, just, the Dark Ride Terrakian player is not. It's usually the other way around. That's uh, how these decks play normally. You know, the Stage 2 deck... Excuse me, let's rewind that and start over. The Stage 2 deck 
is clunky. It takes forever to set up normally. But in this situation, that's not the case. Uh, looks like Mark Team is playing an M there, which was interesting because Joe was not playing any supporters. He just attached and passed. So uh, you could have considered just not playing it there, but at the same time, if you get an energy this turn, it's just... You get the first Knight Spear, you're all set up. Your opponent won't even be able to Knight Spear you next turn. So there's no real downside to this. Uh, unless, of course, you don't draw an energy. Which, um... I don't see an energy. <laughs> so there is the downside. Of oh, there's a Prism, never mind. Uh, so he does have that. So he can attach that to his active and Knight Spear this turn for sure. He has not attached yet for the turn. Um... So he's definitely going to get a Night Sphere off this turn, unless for some reason he decides not to play the Prism. I'm not sure why he would not play the Prism, though. So he's just, yep, he's just going to put it on his Dark Eye. Interesting that he is playing Prism. We just see Blend normally. But maybe he's got something that I don't know about. Maybe he's playing Terrakian as well. Or maybe he just likes Prism Energy. Who knows? So he's going to catch out that Dark Eye with the Dark on it and then Night Sphere. Uh, I don't know how much I like this play. I would rather just save your catcher, attack the Dark Eye that doesn't have an energy, force Joe out to attach to it, and then um, force him to retreat. But, eh, what do I know? Um, so Joe is going to play an energy search here. It's a very nifty card to have with Sableye, since you can always just junk hunt for it. It's very nice. Um, and it lets you search for fighting energy as well as dark. But here he's just going to get another basic dark. Let's see where he puts it. Uh, I'm sure a deck like this plays lots of energy switch. But he's going to Ultra Ball. This is probably just to fuel a Dark Patch. I don't even think he needs any other Pokemon. Uh, he's going to grab a third Dark Rye. I guess he just wants one that's clean of all damage. Since um, both of his Dark Rye's have taken damage at this point. Which is pretty big, actually. Uh, getting your Dark Rye Knight Speared for 30 is really troublesome. Um... I don't know how else to put it, you just, now if you put an Eevee Light on it, it's just 270 hits, and then, um, and then a, a 10 hit away from a Night Spear, from being knocked out, so, I don't know, <laughs> um, so we do have a Catcher here on a Dino, so I guess he's, there's no downside to playing that, because he's just gonna Juniper anyway, and there's an off chance he could pull, like, uh, an energy switch and an energy and then attack this turn and he's retreating to this dark eye so that actually might happen there's one two energy switches wow so that night spear came out of nowhere but that's just kind of um what happens when you catch out that dark eye with the energy attached to it there um i don't think that would have happened if he just left that one dark eye up with no energy because Jaw didn't have one to attach from his hand. So, just an insight on how little things like that can impact the game. So now Jaw has taken the first prize, but he does have two damaged Dark Rides out there. Uh, there's a High Dragon in play, and I gotta say, it's still looking good for Mark Team. I, I don't really think he's gonna have any trouble unless he just doesn't draw anything the rest of the way. Uh, that High Dragon has 150 hit points, it's very difficult to knock out, and I, I just don't see it really happening. Now he's got a catcher in hand. He's going to play this Bianca here to draw three, it looks like. Um, I would not use that catcher. I mean, you you could catcher out Terrakian, maybe. That might be a good play. And then hit a Dark Rye for 30. Uh, I wouldn't mind that play at all. But you're pretty much just better off going for a Night Spear on the active for 90. And then 30 to maybe one of the bench Dark Rise. Or even Terrakian works. So he's going to target down the Dark Eye with 60 on it. That's a, a good move. Wh what this is doing basically is now just kind of look at the field. He's got 90 damage on one Dark Eye, 90 damage on another Dark Eye, 60 damage on another Dark Eye. So these things are going to get all knocked out by either Night Spear or by Dragon Blast from High Dragon. So as long as Mark Team can keep the High Dragon alive and get a blend energy in play. He can just Dragon Blast for a ton of prizes. Now there's three Dark Eyes, that's six prizes. So it's going to be perfectly possible for this to happen. 
Jaw, he will play another Energy Search and grab a Fighting. Uh, this is going to be pretty threatening just to get a Fighting on your Terrakian. Um, I mean, if Martim knocks something out, uh, the Retaliate is coming for him. You know, it's just 180 to a Dark Eye. Of course, he does have Evil Light. Um, so Jaw will need a, um, a Tool Scrapper or a Plus Power. Most people just play Tool Scrapper nowadays, not Plus Power. Uh, but he'll need either one of those to retaliate and knock out a Darkrai. Now this is this is the tricky situation you could be in with the High Dragon deck against the Darkrai Terrakian deck. He has the Max Potion, but he has to use it on his High Dragon because it's got 60 on it. If Jaw were to catch that out, it just gets knocked out. And then he has no more energy manipulation, and then it just becomes a battle of Darkrai versus Darkrai and Terrakian. Which is not what you want. So you need to keep that alive. Now, um, Martim, I mean, he's got a catcher in hand, he's got a Juniper, I think, as well, so he's kind of like, uh, what do I do here? I can catcher out the Terrakian and hit it for 90, which is a perfectly good play. Or I can just take the knockout and eat or retaliate for 160. That's also a decent play. I mean, why not? Uh, you're going to take these two prizes from the Darkrai. Uh, the only way that's going to really bite you is if he has a Tool Scrapper, too. Which he certainly could. But uh, the problem then, if he takes out your Darkrai, uh, he takes out all three energy in play. That is the big thing here. So I would actually think you might catch out Teraki in this situation. You just hit it before it can hurt you. And this is... Kind of the thing with Terrakian, it's very good if you can just retaliate when you have no damage on you. But, um, if he gets hit first, Land Crush takes three energy to attack. Uh, it does not get powered up very easily. Retaliate is the easy attack. And it looks like Martim is just going to knock out the active Darkrai. And put 30 on the Terrakian. I don't mind that play, it's going to make it easier for him to knock that out in the future. Uh, but now this is going to be a big turn. Does Joao have a Tool Scrapper? He's going to play a Charon for three, and he's going to be digging for it. I don't know if he actually plays it, but um, a lot of these decks do, because being able to knock out a Darkrai in one hit with Terrakian is too important not to just play Tool Scrapper. Uh, but he's going to attach to his Terrakian. And let's see what he does. Uh, he's just going to retaliate for a bunch of damage. <laughs> It's going to be 160 on that dark right now. That could all go away if we see a um, a max potion. But I do think that Martim has gone through two of those at this point. If he can, he should probably get a Sableye as quickly as possible. Maybe just Night Spear this turn and then uh, when, his, when his dark right is knocked out, he should just grab a Sableye and Junk Hunt. But other than that, he doesn't... He's not really in that much trouble. Sure, this Terrakian is going to start barreling down on him, but that's really all Joao has going for him. Uh, he does not have a second Darkrai powered up, and even if he did, they are both heavily, heavily damaged. But we're going to see a Juniper here, and there's a lot of things that um, Martim could draw here. You know, if he gets a Blend Energy, he could Dragon Blast for a knockout. He could... Well, he has a Shaman EX in his hand. He could actually just Revenge Blast for a knockout. That would do 120. So I would like to see him do that this turn. Since you're taking all the energy off of Joel's field, the Shaman's not really a liability. You get to take out that Terrakian, and then you just should just be able to clean up with Dark Rise from there. Um, so I definitely would like to see him use the Shaman this turn. I know, I know it's very risky as he's playing musical chairs with his energy, going around and around and around. <laughs> um, but this is a good usage of Shaman. So I would... I would Definitely think it's the right play to put down the Shaman EX this turn and Revenge Blast for the knockout. Terrakian is weak to grass, so it would do 60 times 2, uh, 30 plus 30 for each prize taken. Times 2 would be 120, pretty simple. Uh, and yeah, you get the knockout. But it looks like he's going to retreat to his other Dark Rai and Dark Trance all of his energy over. Uh, he's going to put all three Dark on Dark Rai and then, ooh... He puts a prism on the high dragon. That's uh, it's kind of a bad mistake. 
When you put the Prism on High Dragon, you can no longer move it around because it's now a colorless energy. <laughs> uh, it, it's only Dark type when it's on a basic Pokemon. So this was a very basic mistake. You never put your Prism on an evolution because then it's stuck there. You can never use it anymore. And he's probably just better off leaving the, the Prism on the active. Because you don't know if, um, if Jaw plays Enhanced Hammer or anything like that. But he's going to uh, random receiver, get an N, random receiver, get another N. And we'll see what he does here. Now they did just change this ruling. You are supposed to shuffle now for random receiver, but that's not that big of a deal. Uh, he's going to check to see if he can dark patch, and of course he can. His dark eye was knocked out already. So he's going to dark patch onto his bench dark eye with 90 damage. And let's see. Oh, <laughs> My team never took his two prizes for uh, knocking out that first Dark Rite. Uh, that is kind of bad. Uh, but it looks like we're just going to play an N and sweep that under the rug. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, who knows if that would impact anything with Juniper, but we'll just uh, we'll forget that happened. You know, this is a fairly casual tournament. and Battle Road is, of course, a premier event, but they are fairly casual on the scale of competitive play so um yeah so four prizes to five if draw gets a fighting energy here he can uh land crush or not because he's gonna enhance hammer away the prism i don't think you should use it there just save it because that prism is absolutely worthless you cannot move it around anymore but now Joao is in an okay spot um his Terrakian has 120 damage on it, but he has taken all the energy off of Martim's field. So, he's going to get to draw a card here, and then, hmm. I don't actually know where he goes from here. He did not get anything off that end for four. Um, I mean, if he had gotten, yikes, um, even a Sableye and an energy, or a Dino and an energy, he could knock out this Terrakian by doing 10 damage. But he cannot even do 10 damage. <laughs> uh, this is really strange. Now he max potions off a of Darkrai on the bench. Which is really, really weird. Uh, he is the active one with uh, 160 damage. So, I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. But this active Darkrai is going to get knocked out for sure. If Jaw has the cards, he should actually probably Night Spear this turn for a knockout instead of doing anything else. If he has another Enhanced Hammer, he could get rid of that uh, Blend Energy, but this is going to be kind of a scary turn. If he takes down this Darkrai, then that Shaman is doing a ton of damage with Revenge Blast. It's just going to plow through pretty much everything. And he's actually going to just knock it out with Terrakian. Um, he must not have had the cards to do anything here. And now we'll see, does Martim draw an Energy or anything in order to use Revenge Blast here, and no, he draws a Catcher. Yeah, that's not good. He won't really have anything to work with here. And I'm thinking that is gonna make a nice comeback here and win this first game. Unless Martim can top deck an N or something. He actually doesn't even play his Catcher. That's a strange decision. Uh, you would definitely want to try to stall there. Because pretty much everything in Joao's field is going to be knocked out by I mean, anything that can attack at this point. So you would try to catch him without an energy and um, try to stall for a turn that way. But I guess not. And it looks like he's got a random receiver for a Juniper. So if he gets a Tool Scrapper and a Catcher this turn, he can win with a Land Crush. It's crazy that this Terrakian has actually survived for this long. It has 120 damage on it, but it's just... Uh, it's just plowing through everything. This is what happens when you do not knock this thing out. It just sits there and knocks out Dark Eyes all day. So it's already taken down two Dark Eyes. It's going for number three here. Drow's going to thin out his deck a little with Ultra Ball. He already played the Tool Scrapper, so all he needs is a catcher off of his Juniper, and it's game over. And I think he's going to get it. I mean, he doesn't have many cards left. I don't think he's actually played that many catchers either. Maybe uh, two already. So as long as he gets one catcher off these seven cards, he's going to win right here. So does he draw it? And... Yep, the first card. <laughs> So he's going to catch out Darkrai and Land Crush. So, Joel will win this first game in this best 2 out of 3 series in the third round. 
of the Barrero Portugal Battle Road. So we're just going to um, skip the setup a little bit and then we'll be right back when the second game is starting up. So we'll just skip over to that. Alright guys, welcome back to the second game. We're going to get started up here. And we're going to draw seven cards between Joao and Martim. So it's just one more game here. And then Joao should take the series here. Um, I'm not sure how much time we really have left. I think that first game took about 20 minutes. So there's about 25 minutes left for two games to finish. Not really that great, but... Um, at least it makes sure that you get one full game. So we'll see what happens here. Obviously, Martin will decide to go first. Since he lost the first game, he gets to choose who goes first in the second one. And you always want to go first. Because there's no drawback to going first. It's all gravy. <laughs> so he's just going to start off by playing an N. It's not the greatest start in the world. But, you know, better than not having a supporter. Um, he's going to start with a Dino against a Darkrai. So Joao, uh, I don't think Darkrai is a preferred starter. It's much better than Terrakian, but he would always prefer to start Sableye. Because Junk Hunt is just that good. It lets you reuse your trainers, lets you get back Dark Patches and stuff early on. And yeah, I mean, that's just who you want to start with pretty much every time. Plus you, get, you want Darkrai on your bench so you can Dark Patch to him early on. But he started with Darkrai. Um, our team will be getting a Darkrai of his own out here. Gets an energy on his Dino. Uh, I would actually consider just using a Headbutt there to do the 10 damage. That actually can be relevant at some point. But he's just going to decide to retreat instead and pass. Now it, It's perfectly understandable to be kind of afraid of you know your Dino getting knocked out. But if... If my Dino got knocked out turn one when my opponent started a Darkrai, I would lose my mind. Uh, I cannot see that happening. I mean, that would take... I don't even know. I mean, he he could retaliate, maybe? Um, that would take so many cards, though, because he would need, like, Energy Switch, Dark Patch, move the Dark... Um, from the bench to the active, retreat to it, Terrakian, another energy switch, and a fighting. So, not only do you need another dark Pokemon, and a Terrakian, and a fighting energy, and an energy switch, and another energy switch, and a dark patch. Um, yeah, that's that's what you need <laughs> to pull off a turn or retaliate when you start with Darkrai. Um, you might be more likely to pull off a turn one Night Spear. It's probably about the same thing. So, just not likely. And you're better off just doing the 10 damage there. It can help out tremendously against Dark Rise in these weird Night Spear battles. But, looks like Joao got a very, very nice start. Uh, he got the Dark Patch onto his Sableye. He's got an Eviolite on his Dark Rye. And we're going to see what happens here. I mean, he is threatening a turn 2 Night Spear. When you're running Energy Switch, turn 2 Night Spear is a perfect possibility. I mean... It happens more often than you would think. I mean, it doesn't sound that ridiculous, like turn two Night Spear, big deal, you get a Dark Patch. Uh, but it is kind of a big deal. It, it's become a lot tougher without uh, Junk Arm in the format. Just because it's tougher to get Dark Energy in the discard, it's tougher to keep using Dark Patches. Now people don't play as many Sky Arrow Bridge because there's no Smeargle or Switch, really. So it makes things really difficult to get a quick Night Spear out. Uh, but when you can pull it off, it's very, very good. Energy switch is the key to that. But we do see an Ultra Ball here from our team. He'll probably grab a Zwilus if it's in there. He discarded a High Dragon with his Ultra Ball, so he's probably going to Juniper away his hand this turn. Uh, and he's just going to look, and it looks like uh, Mr. Zwilus might be prized, so he's going to grab a second Dino instead. Not usually a good sign. But he could get a rare candy high dragon off the Juniper, so who knows. Uh, he's going to drop down another Darkrai. Juniper for 7. And see what he gets. He's got a rare candy. Does he get an Ultra Ball or a high dragon as well? I don't see it. So he's probably just going to have to attach and pass. Um, let's see. 
Where is he going to put the energy? It should probably just be on the active, to be honest. And it is. Let's see if he retreats or anything. Um, Or he might take it back. Or not. <laughs> I don't think I like retreating there. So yeah, you just keep the Dark Eye active. And, you know, if he Night Spears you, then feel thankful that he didn't catch her your Dino first. Oh, uh, Joel is going to catch her the Dino without the energy. Um, I don't mind that. Because even if he whiffs the Night Spear, now it's going to be difficult for Martim to pull anything off. We see a Juniper for 7. So it's going to take an Energy and an Energy Switch to pull off a Night Spear. But if he does, that is such a big momentum swing. If you can knock out a Dino, turn 2, and then put 30 on another one, that is so powerful. Uh, you just put so much pressure on an opponent when you do that. And... Uh, it doesn't look like he has it, otherwise he probably would have done it already. He hasn't retreated to his Dark Eye or anything like that, but... Nope, alright, so he's going to get a catcher back on his Ultra Ball. So, a lot slower... I mean, the difference between turn 2 and turn 3 Night Spearing is so big. You give an extra turn to your opponent to evolve, and that's just not what you want to do. Uh, looks like Martim is going to put down... A Sableye, just attached to his active Dino, and he'll probably retreat. He'll play an N, I'm sure. Trying to get his uh, his Hydreigon out, because he really needs to get that into play. So he's going to play his N, and we'll see what he gets here. Not having that Zwilus out actually impacted the game tremendously. You know, he, he could have had Hydreigon this turn, maybe, because he wouldn't have needed the Rare Candy. Uh, it definitely would have just put a lot more pressure on Joao to start, you know, attacking quicker. You know, missing that Night Spear would have been bigger, but now, who knows. So it's all going to depend on how quickly we can see a High Dragon actually get out here. So it looks like we don't see the High Dragon, we just see an Eevee Light go on the Darkrai. And he's going to play an Ultra Ball. I don't know if he should play that or not. There's nothing for him to really grab, is there? There's... No, I mean... What do you take? You, you can't get your Zwilus, so you might as well just wait until you have your Rare Candy. And he's just going to send up Sableye. That's fine. Um, That means next turn. Uh, that thing's going to get knocked out, but that's not that big of a deal. Um, You can always just Ultra Ball for another one. And then maybe get something going. So now Joe has to be feeling very, very good about his position. I mean, it's just... You get to Night Spear, knock out something. I mean, he got his catcher back, so he'll probably find a catcher this turn. Uh, looks like he's going to random receiver, get a Charon. It's not that bad. But yeah, if he gets a catcher, he can catch out a Dino. Knock one out, do 30 to another, and then it leaves... Martin with really just one turn to evolve into High Dragon, I and mean, if he whiffs that, then Joao's got a clear path to victory. I mean, if you don't get High Dragon into play against a Dark Rite Tracking deck, you are just in trouble. I mean, if you don't get a High Dragon in play in general, you're pretty much in trouble because that's your whole strategy. <laughs> um, you you want to get High Dragon out in Dark Trance and heal your Pokemon with Max Potion and you know, just attack with all your different stuff without ever getting knocked out. But there's a catcher. He's going to do 30 to the bench dino. Knock out one dino. That is a big, big, big play. And we'll see what happens from here. Our team does a subtle thing here by promoting the dino. This is a very smart thing to do. Um, he wants to give himself an option to Dark Patch onto his Dark Ride that already has the energy on it. And this was the only Pokemon he could promote that has free retreat in order to do that. Now, ugh, does not look like he has anything going for him. He has a max potion, so he can maybe keep that dino alive. Um, and oh no, he made a big mistake. He didn't retreat before he played the max potion. Uh-oh. <laughs> that could end up costing him the game. But it looks like Joel is going to be a very nice guy and allow him to take that back. Wow, that's a very good sportsmanship there. That was like a game-ending mistake. So... Very, very nice of his opponent to allow him to do that. Um, I mean, just imagine if you can't retreat there. Your dino just gets knocked out. You don't get to use Junk Hunt. You lose the game, <laughs> pretty much. 
Now we have an Ultra Ball. Uh, he's going to discard a Blend and a Dark Eye. He needs to get another Dino in play. He recognizes this. But will it even matter? I mean, well, first of all, is there another Dino in his deck? Um, looks like, oh, looks like his Wireless is in there. He just opted to get another uh, Dino instead earlier on, which was fine because, I mean, if if he doesn't have two Dinos out, Zwilus is a 90 hit point Pokemon, so. Uh, I'm scared that there's no Dino left in his deck, though. That could just be game over. Not having any high Dragon to work with. That is just a bummer. Uh, and as he was flipping through his deck, I did see Martin was playing Terrakian, so. I guess he does play that as well. But it's a little tougher for him to use. Um, because, I don't know. He, he doesn't have high drag on out. That's that's the big problem. So no catcher from draw, no supporter at all. Uh, this is going to give Martim a chance to get high drag on into play. He's going to play a random receiver. Get a juniper. And here we go. I mean, if he gets that into play, he is still just fine. There's no problems at all. He'll, he'll be down two prizes, but that is not as big of a deal as you would think with this deck. Since you have Max Potion and all that stuff. Uh, he's going to Max Potion his Wireless. Put down his Shaman EX and then go for the Juniper. He needs an Ultra Ball or a Hydragon. Otherwise he is going to be in a ton of trouble. So what does he draw? I don't see it. Wow. Does not get anything off of that. I believe he has a Darkrai. But that's all he has. Uh, that's just not going to do it. And these are going to be some tough decisions in these coming turns. Uh, I couldn't tell if there was another Dino in his hand. There might be. Yeah, there is another Dino in his hand. So he certainly needs to put that down right now. Just in case his wireless gets catchered. But let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, he's only got 4 bench Pokemon. He certainly needs to put down the Dino to give himself a shot at this game. If he doesn't, he's in trouble. And ugh, he doesn't. Uh, I don't believe he played Dark Patch either. Uh, we have an Enhanced Hammer. Martin thought that was a catcher, but that was actually an enhanced hammer to discard the prism. Let's see, um, <laughs> hopefully they noticed that at some point. Uh, that, hey, your dark rag should not be active right now. And that prism should not be there. Hopefully that gets discovered very quickly. <laughs> that could be bad. Um, let's see. I think Joao was too engrossed in his turn to recognize what happened there. He's just kind of like enhanced hammer and then goes back to doing what he's doing. But yeah, this is a big deal if they don't realize what happened. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, he's ultra ball the way two dark energy and ooh, two dark patches. So he's going to be powering up another dark eye. This is big. This is just, I mean, having two fully powered dark eyes with no damage, a Terrakian with a fighting... Ugh, this is just really bad from our team. Uh, but uh, they still haven't recognized that whole enhanced hammer situation, apparently. Uh, hopefully when he announces his attack, he will realize that this is not correct. <laughs> uh, but they still haven't figured it out. Anyway, uh, I have to think at this point that Joao will come out on top eventually. He's got the two-prize lead. He's got a full setup, and he's got a Terrakian at any point to just knock out a Darkrai. And alright, finally they figured out, okay, that should be an Enhanced Hammer, not a Catcher. That Darkrai shouldn't even be active. So hopefully they figure that out. Uh, I don't think they have yet, but um... There's a Tool Scrapper. So this is a bit of a weird situation that thing, that thing should definitely not be active right now. The Dark Rider with no energy was the one that was active. So just a lesson to always pay attention to what's happening on your field. Um, don't always assume that someone's playing a catcher. Um, <laughs> he's trying to Dark Patch to his Shaman there. Uh, that does not work. You have to Dark Patch to a Dark Pokemon. So Marty might be a little nervous. You can see there's a lot of little mistakes happening. Uh, I don't know much background about him. I have never heard his name before, so maybe he's kind of new to the game. Uh, doesn't seem like he... Well, I don't want to say it doesn't seem like he knows what he's doing, but um, it's it seems like he's a little nervous, and maybe he doesn't know how all the cards function. So, 
Um, you can see by the dark patch there, and just all the little things that have happened. You can see he's kind of nervous now. All the dice are <laughs> kind of flying around. He's accidentally bumping into things. So if you're at a tournament, just take your time. There's no reason to get all nervous about this stuff. It's just a game, and just take your time. Otherwise, uh, stuff can spiral out of control, like, you know, promoting a dark guy when it shouldn't be there. <laughs> So now Joao is in firm control. I wouldn't be surprised if we saw him win in like three or four turns, something like that. He still hasn't gotten a chance to catch out that Zwilus, though. That's the only thing really keeping Martim in this game is the fact that the Zwilus is alive. But here we see a Juniper, and this could be it. Catcher would be the absolute nail in the coffin. To knock out the Zwilus and take away pretty much every option that our team has. And there it is. The catcher on the Zwilus. High Dragon's not coming out this game, folks. So we're going to see it in Night Spear for, well, a knockout. And then 32 Mewtwo. I don't think that mattered that much. Uh, he's going to promote his Darkrai with no damage. He should definitely promote the one with damage so that he could Dark Patch to the undamaged one, but we'll see what happens. Um, and now I, I just don't see a way out for Martim. This is just going to be kind of a, a slow, painful death. Uh, might not even be that slow. Uh, he's going to random receiver for an N. That's going to be um, going to be the one card that can maybe give him a shot at this. If he can N and then get a Dino out and then a rare candy Hydragon, maybe he'll have a shot. Uh, he still does have a dino in his hand, I think, so he definitely needs to get that down there. And you can see at this point he's just kind of like, ah, what do I do? I got nothing going. Uh, he's going to put a blend on his shaman. That's probably not going to work out too well. But, well, I mean, what else can he do? I, I'm not too sure, but he needs to put down the dino, he needs to end, and he needs to cross his fingers. But it looks like he's doing none of it. And he's just kind of accepted defeat at this point. He's saying, you know what? Yeah, I pretty much lost. And you know what? It happens. And he, he's just, I guess, not trying to drag this thing out. Because he definitely had an option to play an end there and put down his dino. Or maybe he's just, like, trying to lure Joao into going down to one prize so that he can revenge blast. Um, he does get an N from his random receiver. Maybe he'll play that just to, you know, get that out of his deck. I mean, I, I don't know what else he has in his hand. But you can really just assume that you're going to be N because you knew Martin has one from his random receiver. So you should probably play it before you go down to one prize. But it looks like he doesn't. And this game should just pretty much be over. That Shaman has 30 damage on it already, so it's just going to take a Night Spear and... Well, get knocked out. <laughs> Unless Martim gets an Eviolite. That's one way he could maybe survive a little bit. But the problem is there's just too many attackers lined up for Joao. And, um, again, Martim did not bench his Dino. I, I'm pretty sure there was a Dino in his hand. I don't know why he wouldn't bench that. I mean, if, if Joao has a catcher, he wins regardless. And your only way to win at this point is just, you know, to start moving energy around. Um, I... Huh. Well, uh, Joao actually doesn't have three energy on a Darkrai, so... He still needs an energy to kind of win. I guess. There's one way of looking at it. Uh, now we do see a Max Potion and a Dark Patch. <laughs> he tries again to Dark Patch to a non-Dark Pokemon. And it looks like he's just going to Revenge Blast for a massive amount of damage. That's going to be 360, well 340 because of the Eviolite, but... 360 basically uh, but there we do see the dark energy and that is going to be the end of this series Joao Lopez will take this 2-0 and move on to be 3-0 at this battle road so thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed this matchup uh, between a, uh, a couple players from a different country you know we don't always get the chance to feature Portuguese players that is the, the nation where uh, Igor is from our world champion so it's nice to get a look at these tournaments. But thanks for watching, guys. We'll be back with round four from this tournament soon. I am Puka from the Top Cut, and I'll see you guys for the next one.